Um, Father, we thank you um, for another day, um, another opportunity um, to serve you, to bless your holy name. Um, I pray this morning as 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 um, brothers in Christ um, that we can go um, to your word and we can gain some understanding, particularly in the area of forgiveness. And as we look at um, a few passages of scripture on forgiveness, our prayers that you enlighten us, give us understanding. And not only that we receive understanding, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, we'll be willing um, to put it into practice. Um, we understand that this is not something we do as an academic study, but we do because we love you first. Um, we trust in you. We realize that your ways are not our ways. Our thoughts are not your thoughts. Um, and so we're happy that you have given us your word and we hold it true to our hearts. Uh, we know that we, we don't always get it right. That's why you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And you have given us an example. And so as we look at the very words of Christ this morning, help us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Right, amen. And it's good to see everyone this morning. And for a subject for this morning, I'd like to speak from the topic, overcoming an unforgiving heart. Overcoming an unforgiving heart. And brothers, the passage of scripture I'd like to lift this morning comes out of the gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 18. And I just want to read verses 21 and 22, but the remaining verses is 13 verses in this chapter. I'm going to hit a few things to highlight the story because it's a narrative form. Um, but I also want to introduce some thoughts um, of, of why we're uh, less likely to forgive and then go back to Bible. We got Bible this morning. <laughs> so so the scriptures are clear. Um, and I, I'm pretty much sometimes I don't like to look at something outside. But I found something I think that would be useful because I found myself in um, the area of, I always say, excuses that uh, people may use why they should not forgive. But let me read these verses. And I have it this morning in the English Standard Version. Doesn't matter what translation you read. It's, it's the same. Uh, we just have to be careful with verse 22 because some of the English translations um, might not convey what's there unless you understand how to use hyphenation. But listen to these words in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 77 times. I'm saying that last part, but 77 times. Some of the modern translations put 490 times, and that's what's captured there. Um, not seven times, but 77 times. And so I'd like to speak from this topic, overcoming an unforgiving heart. And I think at some point, we all have um, crossed this road about being unforgiving. And what's interesting is I found this article, brothers, and um, a brother named B.J. Foster, he writes articles, um, and he kind of titled it All Pro Dead, Brother Randy. All Pro Dead. He's for the fathers. He's, he's for, and he talked about in an article, five reasons people don't forgive. And I just want to lay out some of the reasons before we get into the text, uh, five reasons. Now, what sparked this article is, y'all might have heard the song, the gospel song, I Can Only Imagine. You know, I'm not going to sing it to you because I'm not a singer, but you get a chance. You, 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 you put it in. It's a beautiful song, I Can Only Imagine. And it was the number one 
hit on the Billboard Top 100 for a while, right? And and so is the song is I can only imagine. But what why this song was written? Um, a guy named Miller he wrote the song, but he had an issue with his dad, uh, and when he was a teenager, but his dad ended up dying from cancer, you know, and from his experience, he doesn't go in with all the bad experience that he had with his father, but it was enough there that he was left hurt. And so as life went on, he began to reflect on it. And he wrote this song, I can only imagine. And it talks about forgiveness. And in this article, Foster, he writes five things, um, reasons uh, why people, particularly men, uh, might not, uh, women too will fall in, but he's he's tailored to, towards men. The first one, he says, they don't know how. They don't know how to forgive. Um, and you ever been there? Don't know how? Uh, you, don't, you don't know how to make peace with the individual? Uh, you don't know how to make peace uh, when you have that wavered spouse, wavered child? Uh, you don't know how to make peace? Um, with uh, a racist boss. Uh, so you can see how easily um, uh, a dilemma uh, uh, that we, we might find ourselves in because we don't know how to approach it. The second one is that they, you know, we don't know how to let go bitterness. And, and, and we probably can agree on that, right? Um, it, you know, I have not experienced uh, hurt from my parents. Uh, I've been I've been blessed. Um, but there's some things I might have disagreed with and some things that my parents might have been stern on some things and I might have been caught up in my own feelings. But there's some there's some people who got some real issues with their parents and particularly with their dad, you know, um, have some real issues. But at the end of the day, uh, it, it comes down that most of us don't know how to let go bitterness. The third thing is. Um, in most cases, if we're not careful and we get puffed up in our pride, we believe that the person don't deserve forgiveness. <laughs> I'm laughing about it, but but think about that. You know, they don't deserve. They're undeserving. Uh, they deserve to get uh, what they gave. An eye for an eye. We go Old Testament, right? Uh, and so uh, they don't deserve it. Uh, and, and we're gonna cover this. <laughs> In this passage, because because if we if we all can see ourselves, you know, we didn't deserve what Christ did for us, but yet He died for us for our sins. The fourth thing is you have to let go self righteousness, um, and all of us have somebody in our circle. They're more street than spiritual. You know, you always got that one friend, brothers, that when you're going in the wrong direction, they'll they they'll feel that. And they're good brothers. They can be good brothers. They can be good sisters. They can be good family members. They may mean well, but it's inconsistent with the word of God on how we ought to behave. And lastly, the fifth one is, is it it has to be an act of a full of the full heart. And so most of us brothers, uh we're not going to play around with it. We're not going to get no lip service. Unless we jammed up in a situation, we might ask a female to forgive us. Might not mean, but, but, but normally we know that forgiveness, that's real, you know, and we know if we're going to engage in something like that, uh, it, it might place us in a situation to look vulnerable. Am I saying, am I saying that right? You know, uh, it, it takes some love. It takes some empathy. It takes some openness. It takes faith. Um, to be able to forgive, and which the believer in Christ has it. And so those are five reasons. And, uh, you know, we don't know how. Sometimes we, we refuse to let go of bitterness. Sometimes we feel that a person don't even deserve it. Um, and then sometimes we have challenges with letting go self-righteousness. And it is a, a, a full act of the heart, you know. And so sometimes we, we, we're not willing to go the whole mile, uh, because we have to invest 
um, some 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 biblical virtues. We have to invest um, being loving, being merciful, being kind, being gentle. Um, we have to um, embrace reconciliation. And and sometimes brothers, we feel like since they wrong us, they ought to come to us. But what we learn here in going back to Matthew chapter 18 is this. Peter asked, he asked Christ, uh, um, how often will my brother sin against me that I should forgive them? And as many as seven times. And you say, well, why would Peter pick seven times? Well, normally the seven, the number seven is a, uh, you know, symbolic of completion. But Peter actually went a little bit more than what, as a Jew, they would have thought of as enough times. Their practice, brothers, was when you consider the book of Amos, he's a prophet in the Old Testament. God had forgave Israel's enemies three times in the book of Amos, three times. So they figured if the Lord forgave three times, that was enough. So that was a common practice. I don't know what our common practice is with our culture. Uh, sometimes we do take criticism that we're too forgiving. You heard that? You know, we're too forgiving, you know. And normally that comes from the side of the house that brothers are, are black to a certain extent. I'm a Christian first, but but I do think highly of my people, my ancestry. I believe in black businesses. I believe in black promotion. But I'm saying that when there's a situation that um, I should forgive someone who looked like me, but I shouldn't be forgiven to someone who does not look like me. Am I making sense? And so that's the situation that we have to make sure um, that we, if we go forgive someone who looks like us, we ought to forgive somebody who does not look like us. If we go forgive someone who, who say they believe in the same um, uh, uh, faith that we have, um, uh, we ought to believe someone who said there is no God. If we're a Democrat, we we forgiven all Democrats, no matter what they do. But then the Republican Party, we don't want to forgive, or vice versa, whatever, whatever. You know, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be brothers that our forgiveness is 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 a one way street or it's one sided. So Jesus said, "I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times, seventy seven times." And, and, and it's interesting how it's written, but if you look at your English translation, brothers, it has the word 70, then it has a, a hyphen, then it has seven times. So that equates, if we do some good mathematics, uh, we got some brothers from Prairie View, from Southern. We got some brothers who worked in industry for some time. So the math is easy. 70 times seven is 490 times. In other words, what Christ was saying to Peter and his disciples is, you ought to have a lifestyle of forgiveness. And he gives... And the remaining verses in Matthew chapter 18, brothers, from verses 23 on down. It's 13 verses, 23 on down to, to verse 35. And he gives a story. And the first part of the story, it starts off with a king who was trying to settle his accounts. That's verse 23. And as he began to look at his accounts, he found someone who owed him 10,000 talents. You know, brothers, that will be equivalent um, to probably about a million dollars in today's money, um, maybe two million today. <laughs> Stuff that went on inflation, but but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of debt. Um, and this 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 person who borrowed the money from the king, he could not pay. So what the king decided to do, um, he ordered that the man be sold with his wife, with his children, and all that he had, so that a payment will be made. That's verse twenty five. You know, uh, in other words. He wanted to sell them off. He wanted to garnish all his stuff. You can't put up the bond monies. Y'all brother smile. We're we going to get a court order to garnish your property so you can pay that debt. And y'all smile. <laughs> but, but here it is. In verse 26, so the servant fell on his knees. Now, what, when he fell on his knees to the king, he implored the king. He, he begged the king. He said, have patience with me. This is verse 26. And I will pay you everything. And out of pity, the master of the servant released him and forgave his debt. Now, amen, brothers. Wouldn't that be nice if you could employ or you can beg the Discover Card, uh, Capital One, your mortgage company? You, you, you could, <laughs> brothers, you lose your job, some stuff happen. 
get hit with a heavy child support on. That happened to me. You know, it'd be nice if you could call and you could pull and beg your creditor and they forgive you. But see, the story don't stop there. You know, a lot of people want to shout about that. And that's something to shout about. But it goes on. The same person, the same servant, the same one who took out the credit and was forgiven by the king, he asked somebody to owe him some money. And the person who owed him money, it was less than 10% of what he owed and was forgiven of. So in other words, if brothers, if he owed a million dollars, here, he got somebody to owe him less than $100,000, right? And what he did is instead of exercising the same mercy, the forgiveness, your Bible says the pity, having pity on the person, what he did is he decided to put the person in jail. And, and that's what's captured in verse 30. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. Now, I don't know how he will be able to pay the debt if he locked up, but maybe the, it, the, the burden fell on his family. So when his fellow servants, verse 31 in chapter 18, saw that had, had what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. You, you know, um, it's been times, brothers, that I was operating with an unforgiving heart. And I had someone close, like a mother, a father, a, 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 a sister, or a close friend or a church member. And they were very disturbed how I was behaving. And they knew the story. And they knew both parties. And it wasn't until I had a conversation with them for the veil to be lifted from me that even though that person might have been long and all have loaned me, uh, I was just walking and, and I wasn't behaving uh, like I should behave as a child of God. But what ended up happening and what closes this chapter, brothers, and I get to some application, is that the master, the king who had forgiven um, the first guy who ended up putting his, the person who owed him money in prison, summoned him and asked him what happened. And he told him, I forgave all the debt because you pleaded with me. And verse 33, and you should not have had mercy on your fellow servants. So in other words, you should you didn't have no mercy. You should have, just like I had mercy on you. So he angered the king, um, and he took this servant, uh, and he jailed that servant, you know. And so Jesus concludes this chapter 18. He says that when we exercise um, an unforgiving heart, um, when we're not overcome, overcoming of an unforgiving heart, he said that the same thing that you do, Christ said, my heavenly father would do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from the heart. So it's something that's said here. Now, this is not talking about salvation. This is talking about our sanctification. This is talking about our daily walk with God. This is talking about uh how we are to exercise our faith uh, in times, and, and then everybody's looking, you know? And so he said the same way, if you don't forgive your brother from your heart, and to forgive from your heart speaks of your whole heart and mind. It's more than lip service. And so we see we see the biblical record of the, of the story here, and the biblical principle of, that we are to forgive uh, just not seven times, but 77 times. And so what can we gain? What can we glean, brothers, this morning from this? Uh, well, Jesus also says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, bless those who curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you. Now, we understand what curse means. Uh, you know, people don't mean you well. Uh, people sabotage. And and, uh, and that might just fall really onto the despitefully use you, but what I want to share with you about this despitefully use you, uh, that's mistreatment. And the word there for mistreatment, brothers, is a person who tries to intimidate you by threats or false accusa accusations, demonize you. We got to pray for those ones. Uh, 
and undermine you, um, trying to take your place, you know, and, 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 and do any means necessary, just drag you down. And also, it speaks of a mistreatment and it covers molestation, molest, molestation, molestation. And brothers, I don't know if how long you've been actively involved in this Christian journey, but I've been in enough circles to hear men who have been molested. Strong men. You never would have known it. Great jobs, family, uh, honorable in their communities. And when they finally share their story, you would not have known that was their story. But what comes along with that story, Brother Randy, is their uh, ability to have to forgive the predator who done that. And sometimes that predator was an uncle. Sometimes that predator was a coach. Sometimes that predator was mama's boyfriend or grandma's boyfriend. Or, or, or sometimes it could be as strange as a sibling, an older sibling. But at some point in their Christian journey, they was able to forgive. And I close on this, brothers. Um, I believe looking at this passage of scripture, Jesus don't necessarily have reconciliation with another individual in mind because there could be some things, as, as I explained about the article before, the guy didn't get in details what his father did to him, but obviously it had a big impact on his life, right? Uh, so, and then in that situation, his father died of cancer. How could he have reconciled that relationship if his father's already dead? So I don't necessarily know reconciliation could be a fruit of this, but I believe what Jesus is teaching us that forgiveness is for us. Forgiveness is for us um, to clear our minds, for our minds to be transformed, for our minds to be renewed. See, see forgiveness, it is something that when we're able, even if we go and even if we wrong someone and we ask somebody for forgiveness and they refuse it, and if we did it with the heart, we're released from that burden. We're released. We don't have to cut, carry that baggage. We don't have to carry that luggage. If you don't think forgiveness, brothers, can, can have an impact uh, on your daily walk, uh, Look at some of your past relationships. I know some of the brothers married, but look at some of your past relationships with other individuals. And if they ever said that you brought a lot of baggage to this relationship, <laughs> it, it, it could be because of bitterness. Am I right? Bitterness. If, if you got bitterness, it's a, it's a, it's a, I got a funny feeling, a sneaky suspicion uh, that the bitterness is there because we were oh, we didn't have an overcoming uh, we didn't overcome, you know, uh, and so we have to practice overcoming and overcoming the unforgiving heart. This is real. Um, everybody is impacted by this. Um, from the president on down, uh, everyone is impacted by this. Whether you are saved or unsaved, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, everyone is impacted by this because for all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. But the good news is that we as believers, we don't have to keep on praying and, 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 and saying, the Lord said, just do it. And he'll do the rest. You know, uh, we take the first step. You know, uh, we take the first step. And whatever they might, that might look like. And we don't do what the world tells us to do. But we do it with us, say the Lord. It's a difference. And so, brothers, it was a short message, and I pray that uh, this was helpful for overcoming an unforgiving heart. We got to look at the biblical record, and then we have to practice the biblical principle, which is stated in verse 22. Jesus said to him, talking to Peter and all of the disciples, really, and all of us, I do not say to you seven times, but 70, seven times. Amen and amen. Amen, brother, amen.